Hey guys and welcome to the channel, I'm Zemo, the dad in DPS, and today's video we are going to talk about my top 5 heavy weapons in Fallout 76. Now this list was very hard to decide on because there's so many good heavy weapons in this game, but let's get on with it. But before we do, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Now, the first of today's weapon is the 50 cal. Now, this is one of the few ballistic weapons we've actually got on this list today. And the reason for that is it's just got incredible fire rate. It's one of the stronger weapons in the game for definite. You're seeing it just spews bullets out of it. Now, when it comes to its downsides, its ammo isn't exactly common by comparison of some of the weapons and more often than not you are going to use up far more bullets than you will get back but at the same time the weapon is just a very very powerful gun it has really good dps um crafting its ammo is probably where this uh ammo kind of problem comes from because you can craft quite a lot of it in big bursts like most you know standard heavy rounds but you're seeing against basic enemies like mole miners they just evaporate with this gun and when you go up against stronger enemies like the Scorch Beast Queen, you can deal some pretty hefty and sustained fire on her with pretty much great damage. On top of this, the range it has is quite consistent and long, which allows you to hit targets that are far away from you and essentially take them out before you're even close. So against long distance, good. Against close, it's also good. It's just an all-round very solid and quite effective weapon. But it doesn't quite match up to quite a lot of the weapons on the rest of our list, which is why it's our number five. And today's weapon that we're using in this category is Me Make Boom Boom. Now this is a two-shot bullets explode for area damage weapon that I have had for a long time. It's been by my side since the early days of Fallout 76 and I absolutely love this damn thing. It completely slaps things and it's just consistently fun to use, but it does use a lot of ammo. Now if you're wanting a very easy to get version of uh, a 50 cal if you find the ally beckett his quest line has a drop at the end of it called the final word and this has anti-armor faster fire rate and resilient which i forget what the actual stats are but basically it's faster fire rate anti-armor very good version of the weapon and it's easy to get but yeah let's move on to number four on our list now, number four on the list is here begrudgingly, and the reason for that being is that I think this weapon is one of the best weapons in the game, or rather it's my one of my favourite weapons, and that would be the Plasma Caster. Now, the Plasma Caster is an incredibly powerful weapon. It has incredibly high single shot damage, and is just a very fun and easy to use weapon. Its main advantages is that because of the way that you use it and the way that typically anyone's going to use this weapon, its ammo is so easy to come by. You take out most enemies within one to two hits and then you get back around 10 or so ammo. And as I said, because you're killing things in one to two hits, this is a very good weapon. Now, it can be used in a myriad of different ways. You can use it in VATS if you decide to, and you can also use it freehand. I prefer to use this weapon freehand just because I feel like it is more consistent that way. Um, I, I definitely feel like VATS, you need to build a make a build around it, whereas this is something I can just bring out and fire at things at will which is my favourite way to use this weapon. And you're seeing we are completely slicing through these super mutants. Now, when it comes to against the big bosses, its damage is fairly consistent as well. It is probably, if not the biggest single shot damage outside of like railway rifles against the Scorch Beast Queen and Errol and any other big targets. So it does massive, massive damage. But it does have the downside that its fire rate is not the best. And because it isn't the best, it doesn't quite match in terms of DPS when it comes to the other weapons on the list who have good damage, but incredibly fast fire rates by comparison. But at the same time, 
I definitely think this weapon deserves to be on this list, if not higher. And depending on how you feel, you might agree. <laughs> So the version of this weapon that we're using is the two-shot replenish action points with each kill reload speed version of the plasma caster. Now two-shot is one of the best rolls you can get on here because of the way its damage is calculated. It just consistently feels incredibly good. Um, there's different versions of this weapon you could obviously use and get away with it quite happily, but overall I definitely prefer using two-shot with it. Now, there is only really a couple of ways to get these weapons. One is to finish the Vault Raid of Vault 79 and learn the plan from Bullion. The other is to find uh, Minerva when she's got it available for sale and learning it there. So it is a more awkward weapon on the list to get. Number three on our list is going to be the Flamer. Now, for some people this will be a surprise, for others maybe not. And some people will argue that it should be higher. What I'll say about the Flamers is that they are incredibly powerful weapons with great ammo economy and they have just consistent fire rate and high, high damage. The biggest problem with Flamers, however, is that they lack range. So to get your damage in, you need to be relatively close, if not right on your target. As a result, they are... <sighs> Kind of subjective to like if an enemy's in the air there's nothing you can do with a flamer you need to swap to another item or weapon and that's the main reason they can't be put higher on the list but what i will say is that incredible damage is to be had with this weapon against the scorch beast queen or Errol, you can see how ridiculous this thing can do when you get the chance to hit them but because the queen forces you to shoot her while she's in the air the flamer isn't the ideal weapon to take her on for the majority of the fight sometimes other times she stays down and you can wail on her but quite often she will fly around and be annoying and the version we're using is holy fire now this weapon is a named weapon that can actually be found from an event called beasts of burden so if you don't have this weapon anytime you see beasts of burden pop up go there and you have a chance of getting this to drop at the end now what i'll say is this is a vampire weapon speed breaks 50 percent slower flamer and it's very good vampire on this type of weapon is just absolutely fantastic you can get away with things like um bloodied and whatnot but realistically vampire is one of the best effects on here and the damage is still insane even though i don't have anything on here to boost its damage in terms of the main effect so yeah flamers are absolutely fantastic but that range factor is the only reason this weapon doesn't place higher if not first on the list now number two on our list is the incredibly powerful the incredibly deadly Gauss minigun. Now this thing has some insane damage as you're seeing when we get a clean shot we completely mince enemies. Its main disadvantage is its ammo is by comparison rather expensive but at the same time look at this baby fly. This thing absolutely shreds through enemies. Um, now the Mirelurk Queen is a very tanky enemy and even she is still going down fairly quickly and you just wallop her quite hard. And against things like the Scorch Beast Queen, you'll find the same thing. A bosses do not like this weapon. It completely shreds through just about anything that you can use in the game. It has explosive damage, it has lots of different things. It is overall just a very solid gun with very good range and just consistency. And that's why it managed to pip the Flamer for number two on the list. It is just consistent at all ranges and deadly at all ranges. Now this is what we're using in this video today, it's the large hard-on colluder. This has bloodied with action points for each kill and action point cost. Now this isn't the ideal rules in this weapon by far. I have statistically very bad luck whenever I've tried to craft these weapons, which is why this is pretty much one of the best ones I've got to use. So it could be far, 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 far more powerful if it had damage while aiming or faster fire rate as well as, you know, movement speed while uh, aiming that kind of thing this weapon is just very good and you can see even using an unoptimized one it is doing incredible damage and that is why it's number two on our list 
So before we round up the list, we're going to finish with some honourable mentions. And the first on that list is going to be our newest weapon, the Cremator. Now, this didn't quite get on the list because its raw damage isn't the highest in comparison. But it does have this great burn damage and is one of the funnest weapons to use. It's kind of like having a flamer and a grenade launcher that had a baby. Very consistent weapon, very powerful weapon, but not quite as good in all scenarios like the other weapons in this list. The next for the honourable mentions is the LMG. Now this weapon, I will be honest, probably boasts the highest fire rate and damage of any weapon that's on the list in general. The problem with it being is that it goes through its ammo so quickly that it's very difficult to keep up with production and just sustain using this weapon and it's just a very very solid gun but the ammo is always a kind of problem and because it's expensive to run by comparison and you don't really get your ammo back it kind of just didn't make the list on that basis because we've already ran through a hundred bullets and that's not even against a boss. Against bosses, this would run out so quick. Now, the last honorable mention slot belongs to the Gatling gun. Now, if you watch me during any of our live streams that we do on Thursdays, you'll know that this weapon is one that I use quite consistently. And against regular enemies, this is one of the best weapons to just mull around with. When you kill things, you get ammo back really easily. It is just a very consistent and incredibly hardworking weapon. But its fire rate and quite often its damage fall a little bit short for enemies like the Scorch Beast Queen, which makes it not make the cut for the top five. At the same time though, it is definitely worthy of being one of my favourite and honestly one of the best heavy weapons in the game. Depending on your roles and depending on how you use it, it can be incredibly consistent and powerful. And lastly our number one on the list, the Gatling Plasma. Now, this is possibly one of the most powerful and consistent weapons you can find in Fallout 76. These will do great damage on just about anything you point them at and have insane fire rate, insane ammo capacity, and insane damage. It is very worthy of the title of number one heavy weapon. And this comes from the times of using it when it was a legacy as well. This is just a very, very good weapon. And you're seeing here, it just shreds things. Even the Marlark Queen is no match for this weapon. It is just consistent and powerful. And when you decide to use it against the bosses of the game, you are going to find that it is also very good against them. It can deal damage at range, it can deal damage up close. It is by far one of the better weapons in the game, with very minimal effort required to use it. It is just consistent, effective, and fun. Like, I, I can't stress it enough, it is not my favourite, of course. But I cannot deny that this weapon has just been consistently one of the best in the entire history of this game. There is not a single person here who can look at me and tell me it doesn't deserve to be number one. Because it will do what you need it to do. You want to take down a Deathclaw? It'll kill a Deathclaw. You want to take down a Ghoul? It'll kill a Ghoul. You want to take down the universe? The universe is in trouble. Either way, it's number one on our list. And this is the version I'm using, the Shooty McShoot Face, a bloody damage while aiming, damage resistance while aiming, Plasma Gatling. This is a very powerful version of this weapon. I definitely think that faster fire rate or damage while aiming is by far the god roll in there. Obviously, it just depends on what you want to use. The last effect I've always found on weapons in the heavy category doesn't really matter that much, especially when this thing has such a large clip. Reload speed isn't as useful as damage resistance while aiming because more often than not, you're, you know, resisting damage while you're aiming. So I definitely think this is one of the better roles in here. Movement speed is definitely another thing that could be in here, but overall, this is just one of the best weapons in the game because it puts out such insane damage. I mean, you've seen it yourself on this video. It is a very strong, consistent, and powerful, powerful, powerful weapon. 
and I think it's deserving to be number one. So yeah, that is the list, and the Plasma Gatling is the king of heavy weapons. Now, if you disagree with anything on the list, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that usual stuff. I'd really like to hear some feedback about this video and what you guys think of my list. Um, but with that, we will catch you all next time in the Wasteland. Through the dark, moonlight's dimly shadowed, a shadow creeping. Fear your heart's entwining, a twisting mind, seeking prey to devour. In the dead of the night, he gains more power. His bloodshot. Hunter